How do you get an additional camera or PoE device to an existing location using the original cable? Look, you could potentially re-cable, get in that roof space, work out the original cable run, run new conduit and then re-cable. Or maybe it's a new site for you, you have no idea how that new cable can be run. You can spend your time trying to work out that quote, which you can't charge for, you know, waste valuable time when you could be doing other jobs. Sometimes it's physically not possible to even run that new cable. What if there was a solution, a simple plug and play device, a simple solution for adding another PoE device without having to run an additional cable back to the NVR or equipment room? Look, we've got this device. This is the IPOE E302 and it'll allow you to do just that. Let's take a look at the IPOE E302. The casing itself is an industrial level IP67 rated aluminum case which provides a high level of immunity against you know, electromagnetic interference. It's also capable of withstanding humidity, dirt, dust, shock and vibrations, heat and cold. The casing itself is IK10 vandal proof. Uh, the operating temperatures range from minus 40 to 75 degrees and has a maximum power input of 95 watts and a maximum PoE budget of 65 watt. Each port is 10, 100, 1000 megabits per second with waterproof glands to make that general RJ45 connector waterproof and provides a tight and strong connection. It can also be mounted directly to the surface with dimensions of 170 by 44 by 73 millimeters with the cable glands on. So how does the IPOE E302 work? You simply inject power on this port here and then the IPOE 302 can be located up to 100 meters away from the injector or PoE switch. Depending on the power consumption of your device will determine how much power you'll need to inject. For example, if you have cameras that are rated for 10 watts or less, a 30 PoE injector will suffice. If you need 25 watts per camera, then a 60 to 95 watt PoE injector will be required. From there, you simply connect your PoE device such as your camera or PoE access points to these other two ports. From this point on here, you can go up to another 100 meters away to where you need that device to actually go. So let's test the IPOE E302. So what we're going to do now is test the IPOE 302 and compare the pictures and do a ping test to see how this device compares to if we connect it directly to a switch. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set it all up and we'll come back and check out the results. Well, here we are, this is the base test. We have our cameras and they draw less than 10 watts each. In this case, our cameras draw around 6 watts uh, each in full load. What we've done is we've got these cameras connected to 84 meters of Cat5 and also 100 meters of Cat5 connected directly into a switch. So what we'll do now is we'll do a wave test and a ping test. Um, we'll start with the 84 meter uh, camera first. So if we just jump to the 84 meter we've got here, it's our wave test, which is normal. And we will now do our ping test. You see there, we're getting less than one millisecond um, worth of transmission speed. So what we'll do now is we will cancel that. And then we'll jump into the 100 meter one. There's our wave test. And now we'll do our ping test. And once again there, you can see it's less than one millisecond. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna um, hook up our IPOE 302 and see what kind of difference we get in our data and speeds. So here's our setup. We've got 30 watt PoE switch connected over 100 meters of Cat5 into our IPOE 302. You can use a PoE injector as well, but for this case we'll use our 30 watt switch. Out of that, then we've got 100 meters of Cat5 going into one camera, and then we've got 84 meters of Cat5 going into the second camera. So what you'll notice here is that all the power is actually coming from the switch. You know, so if you've got an NVR or an equipment room, you don't need to get any external power out to the IPOE 302 or your cameras. So what we'll do now is we'll jump into our wave test. So we'll look at our 84 meters. Do a wave test there on the 84. Um, and you can see from here, you know, there's hardly any difference in picture quality. And then when we jump into our 100 meter one, you know, no difference there as well in picture quality. So what we'll do now is we'll jump in and do a, a, a ping test and we'll see what type of results we get there. So what we've got now is, this is the camera that's on 100 meters and we're getting less than one millisecond um, 
worth of bandwidth and transmission data here. So this, the speed is exactly the same as what it was if that camera was connected directly into that uh, PoE switch that we had from the beginning. So if we jump into the second camera, which is on 84 meters of Cat5, once again, we're hardly getting any, like it's less than one millisecond as well in, in data transmission speed. So, you know, and this is now going over an extra 100 meters of Cat5 plus through the IPOE E302. So there's no difference here um, in actual picture quality and you're getting the same speed and transmissions if it was connected directly to that switch, which is pretty impressive. So here's a recap. As you can see from the results, there was no noticeable difference between connecting the cameras directly to you know, your PoE switch or to the IPoE E302. If your clients need an additional camera, access point, or any other PoE device, you don't need to recable all the way back to the equipment room. You know, why recable and waste valuable time trying to figure out how to run that cable? Simply use this plug and play device and add that additional PoE hardware. If you found this video informative, click on the subscribe button and don't forget to follow us on our social platforms such as Facebook or Instagram, which will allow you to get notified of our latest product reviews, all of which are designed to save you time. We're always here to help and support your business.